Hello and welcome to my Swift tutorial for beginners series. Now in the previous lesson you learned about functions, what they are and how to call them. Well in this lesson you're going to learn how to use them in an even more powerful way and that is to have your functions accept data and return data back to you when you call them. All right, stay tuned. So in the last lesson, we declared this function here to add two numbers. And when you call this function, it prints something down in the console. However, most of the times, or rather sometimes, we declare a function to take some input, perform a specific task, and then return the result to us. So the first part of being able to do that is to specify that your function actually returns something back to you when you call it. And let's take a look at the syntax for how this works. So here's the syntax for a function that returns some data. You'll notice that we still have the func keyword and we still have the function name followed by the parentheses. But after that, you have a hyphen followed by a greater than sign, which combines itself to look like an arrow, followed by a space and then the data type of the data that you're going to return from the function. So if in our case, add two numbers, if we wanted to return the result, to the function caller, we would probably put int where it says data type right here because that is the type of the data that we are returning. All right, so after the data type, you have a space and then you have the curly brackets again and you would specify your code. Now, if you do specify a return value like this, inside your function, you must have the return keyword. And that return keyword is used to actually end the function and return the data back. To the caller. So now let's jump back to our playground and modify our function to return the data to us. All right, so we've got our function up here. So we just add a hyphen greater than sign and then we specify space the data type that this function returns. And as I've said, we're working with ints, so I'm going to return an int. So right away you can see Xcode detects hey, you're saying that this function returns data, but you're not using the return keyword. And so we've got this error here. So let's modify our function. Instead of printing C to the console, why don't we try returning it? So we just put return space C, just like that. All right, so let's run our function now. Now nothing gets output into the console. Well, where, where did C go, right? Well, what happens is that when you call a function that returns um, some data, like we have in this case, you have to capture that data somehow. So remember, variables and constants are used to keep track of data, right? So all we need to do is say, let's define a constant, let's call it sum, and we are going to assign to this new constant the result or the returned data from our function, add two numbers. So let's run this and see what happens. Again, actually nothing will happen because we haven't output anything into the console, but let me write this print statement here. So we're gonna print sum, and as you can see, there it is in the console. So what's happening here? Well, add two numbers, we're calling this function, it's declaring A, B, and then uh, declaring C and adding A and B, assigning it to C, and then it's returning C. Um, then we're assigning that result into a new constant called sum. And finally, we are uh, printing that into the console using this print statement. Now, it's not really interesting that whenever we call this function, it always just returns three, right? So wouldn't it be cool if we were able to tell the function which two numbers to add? And we can do that by using input parameters. So let's take a look at the syntax for that. So like I mentioned in the last lesson, we specify our parameters in between the rounded parentheses. Now, if you take a look at the screen, you're going to see how we specify one parameter for our function. And I know that's a lot of text, but we're going to jump into the playground and I will show you an example. So you first start with the data type. Let's start from the right hand and work our way to the left. We start with the data type of the parameter and this merely specifies, you know, if it's an int, if it's a bool, you know, what type of data are you asking for to be input into your function, right? And take note that there is a colon in front of that. 
And then in front of the colon, you have your parameter name. Now you can specify any sort of name you want. Uh, you're going to be using this parameter name inside your function if you want to access that data. And then you have your argument label. Notice that there is a space in between the argument label and parameter name. Now what's the argument label for? Well, it's optional and it helps your function call read more like natural English. I'll show you what that means in a second. For now, why don't we jump back into the playground and take a look at how we specify this parameter. All right, so let's modify our add two numbers function up here with the parameter. And before I use descriptive labels, argument names and parameter names, I am going to um, just put arg here as our argument label and I'm gonna put space and then I'm gonna call this para for our parameter. Remember, then we specify colon and then the data type of our parameter, which is going to be int. And the reason why I'm just specifying the argument label and the parameter name as these is because I want you to see what the resulting function call looks like. So down here, you can see Xcode automatically detects that this function call is no longer correct. In order to call the add two numbers function, you're now gonna have to specify that parameter. So an easy way to do that is just to delete this and then use autocomplete again. And you can see here that now the function call has this, which tells you the return type of the function. Now, if the function doesn't return any data, then you're going to see void in this column instead, kind of like this down here. But our add two numbers function does return an int, so you see int here, and then you can see the parameter that it requires right here, as along with the data type. All right, so let's double click that, or just press enter on that, and you can see that the argument label is right there. And then this int here, we can put a number in there, let's put five. So now this is how you would call add two numbers with one parameter. And you're basically passing in five into the function. From inside of the function, let's say that we wanted to assign that five into A, we would use the parameter name. We're not using the argument label, we're using the parameter name inside the function here. So why don't we go print and the sum should be seven. Right, as you can see here. Now, what if we wanted to specify another parameter so that we can also specify what B should be inside of our function? Well, you can specify multiple parameters. You would just have to use comma in between each parameter. So let's take a look at that syntax. Now, as you can see, you have a comma and then you have your second argument label, then you have your second parameter name and then the data type of that second parameter. Pretty straightforward and you could repeat this for three, four, five, six parameters, whatever you need. All right, now let's jump back to the playground and specify another parameter for our function. So we're gonna go ahead right here and hit comma. And then now I'm gonna say arg2 para2, and that's gonna be an int. And now I'm going to assign para2 to b, and this function call will no longer be correct. So I'm just going to erase that and retype it like that. And you can see now I have to specify two arguments or parameters. So I'm gonna say five and five. And the cool thing is that, let me just go back there for a second, is when you, let's say you're specifying the parameters, you hit five, you can press tab to jump to the next parameter. So that's a little shortcut, little tip for you there. All right, so let's print a sum and we've got 10. Okay, cool. So let me show you some other cool things. I did tell you that argument labels were uh, optional, right? So why don't we go ahead and remove the argument labels here and just have the parameter name and the data type. So incorrect argument labels. So why don't we let's get rid of that and just now, when you make your function call, you have to specify uh, still two parameters, right? Because we still have two parameters, but with the absence of the argument label, now it writes the parameter uh, name. So let's go five and five, like that. All right, so 
generally when you're specifying parameters into your function, you kind of want to be descriptive with them. So para and para2 really doesn't mean anything. So why don't we change that to number one and number two. And remember, changing these parameter names means that we also have to change uh, this. Number one and number two. And as a result, this also changes number, oops. Okay, so we can specify five and five. So that's all good so far. Now, did you notice that initially when we had the argument labels, the function call was using the argument labels, right? But now that we've removed the argument labels from this function definition, this has turned into the parameter name. So if you had a need to make this read like more like natural English, then you could specify argument labels to do it like that. So for example, I, would, I could say add two numbers and my first argument la label could be using and my second argument label can be end. And that would become, the function call would be something like that now, right? Add two numbers using five and five. So it reads clearly and it's really understandable. And inside your function, when you're working with your code, you still uh, reference those parameters with the parameter name that was specified. Right, so you have number one and number two. Now another trick that you could do, if you totally want to omit parameter names and labels from the function call, and you just wanna specify five and five, then what you can do is instead of using argument labels like this, you can just put an underscore in front of your parameter name. There is a space in between that and your parameter name though. So if you specify the underscores like that, then your function call would look like this. Whoops, not that one. Uh, numbers, there we go. Now you just five and five, and that now becomes your function call. So just to recap, you learned about what return values are, you learned how to use the return keyword, you learned about what input parameters are and how to specify them, you learned about parameter names, and you learned about argument labels and how to omit them altogether. Now I know it still might be confusing in your head and that's why I highly recommend that you use the exercises and challenges to practice more. Find all those resources in the link in the description below. Now if you enjoyed this lesson, please hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button, it really helps the channel. All right, now click on over to the next lesson and I'll see you there.